now, the MSU Federal Credit Union Coaches Show. I was overwhelmed, to be honest with you. Standing there looking out over that crowd. What a tribute to those three students. What a tribute to Michigan State in a way. What a tribute to their families that people cared enough. The flowers, the, the different things that went on. I've been through some celebrations. I've been through some tough times, but that was one of the more moving moments in my career. February 13th is a day Tom Izzo will never forget where he was when he found out there was an active shooter on Michigan State's campus. A day three students were killed and five others were hospitalized, sending utter shock and sadness across the entire East Lansing community. The tragedy has affected all Spartans across the globe, and ever since, Izzo has made it his mission to try and unite a community he loves as well as a campus he loves. The power of sports is that it does have the ability to bring people together. And when Michigan State upset number 17 Indiana in its first game back at the Breslin Center, you could feel it in the arena. Well, this week has been unlike any other that Michigan State from a campus standpoint has has seen anything unlike you've ever experienced in your career here at Michigan State. And in the game against Indiana, right as the buzzer went off, you sort of put your hands in your face and almost look like it was not a sigh of relief, but a welcome moment that you guys were able to kind of get the win, just a culmination of it. How would you describe what you were? That's a fair statement. I think it was a combination of a lot of things, you know. There was some relief. There was some joy. There was some sorrow. And there was some, uh, when I got done and just looked around, you know, just. I just wanted to take in the moment, you know, a little bit and uh, realize what our, our guys have done, you know, like everybody, because I've been out there with all this, but it's them that has to go to class, handle the things of their fellow students, play with the pressure, the burden of carrying people, uh, the, uh, the privilege of carrying people, you know, they've had to deal with all of it. So I just said to myself, thank God, you know, that uh, hopefully we were able to bring a little something to the table that night. When they were done and you guys were in the locker room, what was that moment like too, just to be able to share in kind of like a, a sense of uh, togetherness and when you really needed it the most too? You know, that's what it was. And uh, Alan Haller and, and Mel came in and it was like basketball family, athletic department family. Uh, there were some donors in there. It was, um, it was just one of those moments when uh, I could say thank you. I could say, um, where did we go those first like 12, 13 minutes? But I could also appreciate the way we bounced back. And, and this time when they you know, made their little run, we made another run. And they made a little run, and then we made another run. And I thought it was growth for us. So I, I looked at the whole thing and I just said, uh, you know, you're going to remember this day, but uh, we still have to move forward. Over the years, too, it seems like ever since the Breslin Center opened its doors in 1989, it seems like a safe haven for Spartan fans of all ages. How did you feel that in the game against Indiana? I did, I think that was the most incredible part. It was a couple minutes before the game was gonna start. I always do like to look around and see, I appreciate the junior zone or whatever they are up there, the ozone. Um, and it was so big and uh, there were so many people, I didn't see an empty seat. And I just said, wow, everybody does wanna be together. You know, you don't wanna be alone this time. And so the dreams that I had at the vigil where we stick together, where we spend some time together, where we get to hopefully meet new people. And that's where it came up that, you know, you'd like to hug them, but you can't hug 15,000. So the game brought the hug and that's the way I looked at it. Yeah, it was a big hug. Big hug, <laughs> big hug. The 
other part about all of this that's been going on the last couple of weeks is you've been so prominent when it comes to speaking and putting yourself out there and that's not a surprise because that's just who you are but how I don't want to say how difficult is that for you sometimes but to kind of be the voice of this community well that too is mixed uh, feelings you know when you've been here this long I don't feel like I'm the voice of the community because I just think I'm part of the community you know uh, I'm not a coach I just buzzed in and here for a couple of years you know like I said I have the gas stations I go to, the churches I go to, you know, the things you do like that, you know, maybe a restaurant here or there. Um, so I feel like I'm part of this community. It's just that uh, I was put in a position that, again, I say is a privilege. And uh, the burden of it is um, trying to figure out nowadays what to say that is good for all. You know, it just seems like everybody picks everything apart so much. How can you pick anything apart? But they will. And so uh, that part was the most strenuous is, is uh, I said it after the Michigan game. You know, you go into the game. If you win, you want to have fun in the locker room and feel good. And then you say, well, how does that look to the people who lost their kids? And then, you know, you, you say, well, you, you know, if you're sad, if you lose, but what is sad compared to losing a child? So that part was the most difficult, but other than that, I, I didn't look at it as uh, I was the voice. I looked at it as I, I got the chance to do what a lot of people would have done, uh, speak to my school and my community. And I think that's where I'm different. It's, it's both for me, you know, my community, my school. And uh, I loved it, I, did, I really did. Every opportunity he gets, Izzo makes sure to mention how MSU will never forget the eight victims or what happened on campus. Whether he likes it or not, he is the voice of the athletic department. And over the years, he's had to navigate his way through an array of highs and lows. One question we'll address with him after the break is, who does he lean on? Because so many lean on him. Experiencing a Spartans game is a lot like life. Farm Bureau Insurance sees the connection and is a proud supporter of Michigan State Athletics. Find an agent who can protect what matters to you. MSU Federal Credit Union is a proud supporter of Michigan State Athletics. On or off the ice. On or off the field. On or off the court. MSU Federal Credit Union supports my team. My team. My team. My team. And we just wanted to say thanks. Thank you, MSU FCU. Thank, Thank you. you. Welcome back to the MSU Federal Credit Union Coaches Show. In his 28-year head coaching Hall of Fame career, Tom Izzo has experienced the highest of highs in East Lansing, as well as the lowest of lows. He often lends his guidance to just about anyone who needs it. But when he's going through difficult times, who does he seek out for advice? It's where we begin part two of our chat this week. Who do you seek out then in times when you need a shoulder to lean on, cry on, talk to, vent to? <laughs> yeah, all the above. Um, you know, there's not a lot of people because there's not a lot of people that <clears throat> were here for real long. You know, I, I, uh, I happened to see our former president, Dr. Simon, out, out uh, one day and, uh, you know, she helped a little bit. Uh, talked to Mark D'Antonio. Um, he was here for, you know, really about 18 years total, um, you know, as an assistant, as a head coach. And, uh, you know, those are the guys that I did. I still I always talk to my buddy Mariucci and just because you need somebody to, uh, that knows you well too, you know. It's not only, you know, unfortunately he doesn't know the situation here, but he knows me well. Other people know the situation here, but they don't know me as well. It's not, it's not like there's a ton of people you can go to. So, uh, but I have that other, I have my real day job, you know. So mine was spent time with my guys and trying to make sure they were okay and they understood. And, and I think, um, you know, like our trainers and medical people were really good, you know. They gave us just little, Dr. Rosen, just little things that would help and uh, that helped me. You brought something up 
in your press conference this past week about how male athletes have this stigma attached to them. Even maybe males in general have a stigma attached to them. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I can say that. <laughs> Where it's harder for them to express their emotions in a sad way because they, ha they do feel like they have to hold up this persona. How much right now do you think that maybe our country in general just needs, people need to know that it's okay to show emotions? Well, I, I think that's a very important part of our country. You know, I, 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 I do think we need to, uh, what did Jim Valvano say? You need to laugh, you need to cry, you know. Uh, uh, that, that makes it a, a great day if you can do both. And um, that's one thing I've been able to do, you know. I can cry, I can laugh. Um, I don't, I don't look at it as that, but I wasn't an athlete at this level, so maybe that's the difference. But I, I think once a kid, a, a player, realizes that it's okay, um, then you let your emotions out. You know, I, I always said, I mean, hopefully, a day never comes where my heart goes. But when people say, "Are you worried about it?" I say, "No," because I, I never hold my emotions in. You know, but it, it works the same way. In other ways, mentally, I think some people hold everything in, and that's what, you know, causes the mental stress. And uh, for the most part, I don't. I, I, I talk to people. I'm not afraid to talk to people. Um, it's uh, therapeutic, to be honest with you. Who kind of ingrained that um, endearing side? That, or who, who did you get that from? My Your mom, parents? probably. My mom. <laughs> Though my dad was tough, but my mom, you know, my. My mom's a mom, you know, she's a, a loving mom that's uh, still with us. So I, uh, I, I'd i say that's where it, it wasn't necessarily my dad. It definitely wasn't Judd. <laughs> um, but I, you know, I, I think I, I appreciate that it's okay to to feel sad. It's okay to... to uh, to cry after a loss, you know. I don't. I don't look at that as it's a baby. I look at that as uh, I still got a great picture around here somewhere of Mateen crying when we won the national championship. You know, uh, that's just an expression of all you've been through and how much you've gone through and how much it means. If it doesn't mean enough, it probably doesn't hurt enough, or it is, you aren't as happy as you should be because it doesn't mean enough the other way. I, I don't have that problem. While the win against Indiana seems secondary in the grand scheme of things, it was a crucial win for the Spartans for their Big Ten and NCAA tournament seeding. Izzo's favorite month of March is right around the corner, and with it does come the college baseball season. We visit with 15th year head coach Jake Boss when we come back. Closed captioning sponsored by Hearing Life, helping Spartans love their ears. With 41 locations across Michigan, go to hearinglife.com to take a free online hearing test. Welcome back to the MSU Federal Credit Union Coaches Show. It by no means looks or feels like baseball season here in the state of Michigan. It's why the MSU baseball team opened its season down in Phoenix, Arizona last Friday. It's just days after the tragic shooting on Michigan State's campus, and they were able to top their rival Michigan 15 to 8 in their season opener. As Jake Boss shared with our Ian Crest, too, he knows his players found a way to dig deep and play for their community back home. So we'll start with obviously with the week you guys had last week with everything that happened on Monday on campus and then having to play your season openers. What was that like from the start of the week to the end of the week for you guys? Well, tough week, you know, I think for everybody. Um, you know, when Monday happened, obviously uh, a lot of anxiety, you know, try to locate our guys as fast as possible. And, you know, thankfully everybody, every one of our guys was, was uh, safe, um, but pretty rattled, you know, and I think, uh, most guys went home on Tuesday, so obviously no practice Tuesday, which was good for everybody. And then still even Wednesday, we had an optional practice. About two thirds of our guys were there. And I think, you know, again, our freshmen were still pretty, pretty shaken up. And I really think it was good, you know, for us collectively as a team to, to get on the road Thursday. Friday's game, before the game, we had a moment of silence and a prayer that was, was a pretty emotional, um, you know, scene for our guys. And, you know, kudos to, to Michigan and Tracy Smith, their head coach, for uh, 
for taking part in that. I think we're at the greatest university on the, on the planet, you know, in my opinion, and I think these guys agree. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of hard to start a season any better for you guys. Not only do you score 15 runs, but you beat Michigan in doing so. Just what was Friday like in, from everything from the pregame with the moment of silence to scoring 15 runs against your rival? You could feel a little bit of tension, I think, before the game during batting practice. Um, not necessarily because we were playing Michigan, but I just think because of the events of the week. And, uh, you know, again, once the first pitch was thrown, though, it became, you know, more about the game, right? And, uh, and because of that, you know, the game didn't start well for us, uh, obviously, and that may have been a little bit of nerves, but, uh, you know, we settled, our guys settled into it really well and, and really swung the bats well. And, you know, after the game, you know, you get on the bus, it's a happy bus after you win, but it was almost just like a collective, you know, release, I guess, of, uh, you know, some energy and emotion, you know, which was, I think, really, you know, therapeutic for our guys, for, for lack of a better term. Scoring the 15 runs, that, and saw that's something you guys haven't done in, in two seasons. So what would you say is different about this group and with offense that you think can really help and we're going to see more of this season? Well, you know, hopefully we see more of it, obviously. Uh, uh, it's an experienced group, though. I mean, you look around the field and there's a lot of at-bats that are back. Um, you know, really, you know, we started a center, uh, freshman center fielder. Um, and the other guy in center field is the junior college transfer who played a lot of baseball. But, you know, apart from that, you know, right field, left field have all played here a lot. Um, you know, the entire infield has gotten a lot of at-bats here. Our catchers, um, you know, one is a returning guy, one's a transfer who's in his fourth year. And, you know, so there's a lot of experience there. You know, with someone like Brock Vandenberg, winning Big Ten Player of the Week, the first week of the season, what steps has he taken to really elevate his game now as a junior? Yeah, he's really come a long way, uh, Ian. He's, uh, you know, he came, you know, obviously a big, strong kid, left-handed, hitting six foot seven, and uh, didn't hit many home runs in high school. Uh, and so that's all been part of it. And hand-eye coordination has been really well. He's he uses the whole field really well. I do want to go back with one more thing that we've, obviously it's a phrase we've been seeing a lot this last couple of days, Spartan Strong. What, what does that mean to use the term Spartan Strong, you know, with having it on your helmet, even away teams, Michigan having that? So what does that mean to you when you see those words? When we're together, we're, we're at our strongest. I mean, I mean, you know, I think as an individual, um, it's hard to get through something, you know, like what happened last week, uh, you know, alone and, and by yourself. And I think for us, you know, Spartan Strong means just that, a collective group uh, that comes together and there's definitely strength in numbers. And, uh, you know, I think we saw that with our guys last weekend. And, you know, maybe maybe I took that a little bit for granted, maybe we all took it a little bit for granted, but, uh, you know, that old idea again of, of uh, you know, that one unit being stronger than one individual uh, has, been, uh, has been really evident over the last week. One player who brings back plenty of experience is fifth year outfielder Casey Mays. When we come back, you're going to hear from the Kansas native who says the green and white has been in his DNA since the day he was born. Welcome back to the MSU Federal Credit Union Coaches Show. From a young age, Casey Mays always knew he wanted to don the green and white. Now a senior, the outfielder is primed for another solid year for the Spartans. And as he shared with our Haley Schoengart, he is simply following in some familiar footsteps. We got to start off with the Michigan game. What was it like going out there after everything that had kind of unfolded on campus that week? Yeah, it was, um, it was difficult, but at the same time, it was exciting. Um, I felt like going into that game, it was mutually understood between the team that like we're playing for each other and we're playing for the Spartan community, which gave it that much more meaning. I mean, granted, it's you know opening day, it's our rival. We're going all the way down to Arizona, playing at spring training parks, which is awesome. Um, but that just made it have a little bit more value to it. Having gone through that, then to leave a few days later, what was your emotions walking into the season opener? It's usually a really happy time for a lot of people, but did you feel any anxiety or stress or any kind of added emotions going through what you had gone through on Monday? I would say the one that I noticed the most was just sadness. Um, I went to the vigil the night before we left, um, so I kind of had that experience in the back of my head, just seeing you know, thousands of people you know, hugged together, kind of crying and just, that was, that was very, very sad to see, and I did, I did feel that kind of in the back of my head throughout the weekend. What was the support pregame like? We had a lot of fans there, which was great to see. Um, before the game, Michigan came over. Um, we all kind of talked. We, we prayed together. That was really cool. 
Um, and then social media too. I mean, everybody's excited to get, you know, to watch, you know, on, on top of everything that had transpired. Um, it just, you could really feel that the Spartan community was behind us. What was Coach Jake Boss's message after that Michigan game? I mean, you all put up 15 runs, something you all haven't done in years against your rival right after a tragic event that rippled through this community. He was really excited. Um, I could see that there were probably some emotions there too. Um, but the main thing was now we got to repeat it. Um, we came out hot right out of the gate. And the most difficult part about that is turning around and repeating it the next day and then repeating it the next day all the way throughout the spring. So that's going to be the challenge that continues to arise. Starting off the season on a good foot, how crucial is it that you all really do keep that momentum going and bring the fans out and kind of get off on a better foot than maybe last year would have had? Like you said, the momentum part of it is huge. Um, being able to take advantage of that and then just keep it rolling throughout there, um, that, is, that is a huge part of it. In the five years that I've been here, this is the hardest working team we've had. So it's, it's not uncommon at all to see guys going back late at night to get some extra work in, or guys that stay extra in the weight room, or go run sprints, or just whatever you may have. Um, I feel like the dedication outside of our scheduled practice and lift has been exceptional, um, and I think that that has really shown so far. Now I've got to ask you this, your parents met here at Michigan State. They're both student athletes. Do that have any draw into you wanting to come here and don the green and white just like them? Oh yeah, like I, I knew from the time that I was probably 13 that if I got an opportunity to come here, I was coming here. Um, I've got baby pictures next to Spartan statue, um, next to Spartan Stadium. Um, as long as I can remember, I've been wearing green and white. So just getting the opportunity to come here and, and do the same thing that they did is great. It's been awesome. Well, and your dad also played baseball here. So what's it like following in his footsteps, playing in the same program that he once played in? It's a dream come true. Um, I know it is for him as well, just because he gets to come back and be a part of it again. Um, he's gotten to see a lot of his teammates that he played with here, um, as well as just being able to kind of carry on his legacy here has been really special to me. Michigan State will look for Mays to continue his strong offensive start to the season this weekend in South Carolina. As always, we hope you enjoyed this week's episode of the MSU Federal Credit Union Coaches Show. Have a happy and healthy weekend.